Hi, David Vizard here, and you guys are watching Paratech 10. In this episode 159, I'm going to continue the theme on things associated with Eric Weingartner's cam shoot day, which will start in just six days time, I believe. It's the 15th of October as I uh, shoot this and his uh, actual dyno testing, I'm looking across there at my calendar, his actual dyno testing starts on the 21st. So tune into Eric's channel and keep pace with what's going on. Now, if you watched episode 158, you will remember that in several places I made some pretty hearty in-depth requests for more financing for both the prize money and Eric's work on this. Now, guys, don't be tight-fisted. I'm setting in an example here. I've already donated quite a bit to that. And it's not because I think I'm going to win. Sure, I've won the provisional shootout, which was a simulated shootout using Kevin Gertzner's program that's been around now and continually upgraded since, I don't know, 35 years at least. And it's got refined over the ages. Now, I bring this up because there was one instance here where uh, one of the uh, competitors, and I apologize to that competitor, I've forgotten his name. It is not because he's irrelevant in the grand scheme of things. It's that my brain power is beginning to sag noticeably and I just can't recall it as of now but anyway he made the comment that he didn't put a lot of store into dyno simulations now to a large extent I agree with him simulations are just that simulations now some of them are quite good some of them not so the performance trends one and I forgot the name of that right now. I'll put that across the bottom here. It's pretty good. And, and one of the things that you might want to consider here is that the cam I predicted did come out first in that. So either both of us are way off or both of us are somewhere handy. Now, I suspect that both of us are somewhere handy. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm going to win that competition because it shows up best on Kevin's program. No. You'll notice that Kevin calls his programs performance trends, not performance absolutes. Trying to predict the absolute performance of an engine is very difficult. One of the things that you cannot simulate very easily is how effective the combustion is it doesn't matter how long you and i look at that chamber only a guess based on experience will give us an idea of how well that chamber will burn now i've seen lots of chambers and i've seen lots of engines on the dyno and i've experienced a lot there so i'm not too bad at guessing that but most people have no idea worth any consequence. And so all dyno programs that you and I can run at this stage in time tend to, how shall I say, stab a guess at the combustion efficiency. So that's one area where they fall down. But, now here's the thing, some of the areas where they don't fall down are areas where we can very much use their capabilities as an asset. For instance, cam predictability of uh, the performance trends program and it, the effect on com the compression ratio has and the effect that airflow has on it and so on. Those parameters show up pretty good. Other ones do as well from, from uh, uh, repeated dyno tests and then averaging it out and that's things like ring widths, piston clearance, 
rod length, things like this. The program will show the trends of those very well. So if you use one of these programs to build your engine, you are taking a step forward over the average build. Let me show you some of the performance trends uh, engine power prediction program here so you can see roughly what happens. Now I've got to tell you, it's not cheap, but for what it does, it is cheap. Okay, here we go. Well, let's look at the basic example first. This is the engine analyzer basic, as you see here, and it costs just a few cents under 140 bucks. It does cover pretty much everything you'll need as a beginner. You'll be able to test lots of different engine combinations and see how they work. Like how big do you need the carburetor to be? What cylinder heads to use based on their flow capabilities, etc, etc. Anyway, the best way for me to sum this entry level program up, put things into perspective for you, is that I can say that 24 hours with this program going through all the things you can do and exploring it will teach you about the same amount as going to college for a month. So this is a cheaper way to learn. And if you intend to go to college, you might want to get this program first to get a good handle on what's going on. Now let's move on to the intermediate program. This costs right around 220 bucks and will allow you to do just that much more. For instance, if you're into diesels, you can do calculations and uh, perform engine simulations for diesel engines. Another useful factor, especially if you're into machining your own pistons, assuming you have the equipment to do it, is the piston to valve clearance computations that it can tell you just how deep you need to have your piston to valve clearance pockets to not overdo it, but have sufficient clearance. Moving on down this column here, we get to the import head profiles from performance trends files. Now, I deem this to be a very important factor here. Why? Because you can get more realistic results with figures that you know are right because you've just done them or got them from somebody else who's just done them for you. Now, there's two ways you can go here. You can use Performance Trends own Port Flow Analyzer, which I've used many, many, many times when it first came out. A very effective program. Or you can use the program I've written, which is the IOP program, which goes along a slightly different route, but it's convertible to a performance trends program, so you could import that. Now, which is best? Well, that's hard to say. They're written for slightly different purposes. But I can tell you that Kevin Gurchin of Performance Trends never turns out anything that's second rate. My advice here? Look at them both carefully and see which one may work best for you. If you're already a fairly proficient engine builder, the Engine Analyzer Plus would be the one that I would recommend for you. But let me show you the one that I've got. It's the Monster Program. So let's move along to that. As is plainly visible, this is the Engine Analyzer Pro, retailing at just a tad under the $500 mark. Now, you might wonder if it's worth spending $500. Let me say this, for what you get, yes, if you're serious about doing your engines and you're starting off with not too much experience, and I'm talking about maybe less than 10 or 15 years, this is a good program for you to go for. Now, there's a lot going on up there, so it's best that I just uh, read out and summarize because the print's going to be too small to read it all. So here we go. Well, as I've already stated, this is Performance Trends top of the line engine simulation software. It has advanced finite difference, 
wave tuning intake and exhaust simulations. You can change header lengths, intakes, you can do nitrous oxide, turbo and supercharger specs. Most any modification you can imagine. And that is pretty much so. Now, let's start dropping down those lines. Here's some of the good stuff. You can calculate data every 0.1 to 0.4 crank degrees for improved accuracy during predicting the effect of almost any engine modification. There's more inputs for trying more detailed engine mods. Many additional outputs allowing for more detailed analysis like valve toss, piston acceleration, piston thrust on wall, intake and exhaust flows and pressures, and much more degree by degree. You can use full valve flow curves. You can use cam profile files for more accurate cam simulations. And you can do chain calculations where you change things just a small amount at a time and it will keep repeating the tests with the, this small change and then draw out graphs. That is a great asset to have. Well, $500 is not exactly just a couple of lunch break coffees and donuts. It's 500 bucks. Is this program really worth it? Yes. Let me tell you what it's worth to me. It's worth a lot more than $500. Probably half as much again. Contrary to popular opinion, I don't know it all. So that's why this program is worth so much more than just 500 bucks to me. I use it as a learning tool. This, if I can call it that, sport, of motor racing and high performance is one of the most complex hobbies to have so it really can teach you so many of the nuances of the internal combustion engine so it comes highly recommended as far as I'm concerned that's an opinion of mine you have to judge whether that opinion is worth a dime or two or not so you've got my side of the story now you judge for yourself go to the website and investigate these programs kevin's got quite a few videos on his uh, website you can go and look at those and see what it does it takes patience but patience gets results trust me i've had to be very patient to learn some of the things i've learned but you just keep at it and you'll get there and this is a tool to do just that just had a handy uh, piece of news come in from eric weingartner he's just sent all of the competitors in the cam shoot out the cam cards of all the cams now i'm not going to go into what they are you'll get those when eric decides to put those up for public consumption however what i can say is the cam that i've entered has so many cams dotted around the same uh, spec so we are going to see some really close uh, uh, results on this shootout here's my prediction we're going to find a whole bunch of cams up towards the top in one small group and the difference is going to be minuscule. Maybe we should bring in one other factor here. Idle vacuum and see what that does. However, I think I'm going to, to have a go at picking the winning cam. We'll see how close I am. And uh, I will give you that figure in the next few days, certainly before the event. Now, let me go on here and finish this off with a few things I wanted to say about camshafts. Some of you are going to think that I'm fixated on lobe centerline angles. And let me tell you now, you're right. Why? Because for so many years, the lobe centerline angle has been relegated to a, a figure that is produced by calculating it out from the uh, valve events already selected. However, let me say this. 
that is, and I've said it before, that's totally wrong. One of the factors that we need to take into account here is the distribution of events within the opening of one valve, either the intake or exhaust. Now let's say we've got a duration this big. Well, we've got, we'll use the intake valve, we've got the duration that occurs in the overlap, the duration that occurs from here to the bot bottom dead center, and the duration from bo bottom dead center to when it closes the valves. Now ask yourself a question. Do you think apportioning that one, two, three segments and getting just the right amount of each one is important? Well, if you don't, you're terribly misguided because it is the critical thing. Like Brian Tooley said, the most important thing is when you open and close the valves. Well, yes, it is. And that is the summation of those three segments. So, how do you get those right? You start by making sure you get the load center line angle right. So you can see the load center line angle actually governs everything. I'm going to make a prediction now that the cams that do best are going to have a lobe center line angle between 107 and say 110. Let's see if I'm right on that. Anyway, thank you for watching. Don't forget to donate towards Eric's cam shootout prize money and expenses. The prize money will be dished out at the end of the event here. However, Eric's expenses won't be dished out to anyone but him. They will continue after the events run. And I can tell you now, what he's got so far is not enough. So if you're watching this after the event's over, just go over to his channel where he's got his sales uh, going on and either buy something or donate 10 bucks or whatever to help offset the very expensive cost of this test. Anyway, thank you for watching. I will see you shortly. Be ready for the next video.